Well, good Wednesday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I'm sitting here getting ready, getting some ammunition ready for the Dan Salio show uh, with Philly 500 if he shows up today. You know, it's exciting because we booked our trip. We have booked our flight to Cali because I'm going back to Cali, to Cali, to Cali. We're going back to Cali for training camp. And uh, I can't wait to get out there exactly one month from tomorrow. And we'll be there seeing the Dallas Cowboys for that week and seeing one of my brothers in arms, Law Nation. Nothing but the best, of course. Um, in the meet, <coughs> excuse me, in the meantime, this is the NFL silly season where. You know, so much, of course, is speculation. And everybody is chomping at the bit and is excited about having football. But they're trying to stay relevant because there's really nothing to come, you know, to, to really talk about. And this is where you hear all these conspiracy theories and ideas and so on. And I touched on this a little bit last night about um, the idea of Micah Parsons holding out. Even though Micah Parsons has given no indication that he's going to hold out, um, that he's working out on the beach and you see him in the weight room and everything else, the fact that he's even said that, you know, I understand I got to wait my turn to get paid and so on, Mike Farello from uh, Pro Football Talk, um, it should be Pro Football Rumors, um, Mike Farello is the same guy who came up with the Des Bryant uh, video that there might be a video out there uh, five times worse than the Ray Rice one and literally started a whole firestorm. And as of yet, we have yet to see any tape of Des Bryant doing anything anywhere near what he insinuated. So you get a lot of that. Now, that's not to say that he doesn't get some things right because he was right. And the only one talking about the NFL versus uh, the, or excuse me, the direct TV versus us fans lawsuit that that was actually something going on. So, of course, Mike um, Furio went on the fan when Dak Prescott uh, lawsuit came out and was talking about that and so on. And now he's talking about the idea of Micah Parsons holding out. Let's listen to him on 105 The Fan. Shout out to 105 The Fan getting this up here. Thank you for uh, joining us, brother. All right. Talk about how this brother. whole thing could potentially blow up. Well, you've got the three guys whose contract situations remain on seven. And this is the reason why they weren't able to go all in with free agents. They had to figure out Dak's contract first with that $55.4 million cap charge this year and a $54.5 million dead cap charge next year oh, if whoa, they whoa, don't whoa. work something out before his contract void. Hold up. This, this is, wait a minute, guys. See, hold up. This is, hang on. Let, let, let's, th this, wait a minute. I, I, I got to call him on this because this, this is one of those things that bothers me. Okay. Uh, let's go to Dak Prescott's contract here. Hold on. Um, Dak Prescott's contract. Okay. Right here. This year, it's $55 million this year. If the Cowboys were to cut him, it's past June 1st cut him post June 1st, they would end up saving $29 on this year's cap. Okay. And which case the other half of that would be on next year. So it'd be 29 this year and so on. I, or I, I'm not sure exactly how much, but it, it would be another dead hit. So they could actually get some money here if they actually wanted to try and do something. Okay. But it's a $59 million hit this year. If you cut him, let's see, hold it. Okay. If you don't do anything, if you keep his contract where it is this year and you pay the 55, then there's $40 million. $40 million. Where, where is he getting? I, I don't understand where he's getting um, $55 million next year. I, I keep hearing so many of the talking heads out there that can't seem to get these numbers right. As a starter, if they sign him after the contract voids, they go above and beyond 54.5 with whatever cap number he'd have. And then you got C.D. Lamb at $17.9 in his fifth-year option who is not willing to be paid. Hold 
Hold on. They weren't able to go all in with free agents. They had to figure out Dak's contract first with that $55.4 million cap charge this year and a $54.5 million dead cap charge next year if they don't work something out before his contract voids. As a it's four. Look, guy, it's forty million. Where are you getting fifty-five? So wait a minute. We're inflating the numbers. Starter. If they sign him after the contract voids, they go above and beyond fifty-four point five with whatever cap number he'd have. And then you got C.D. Lamb at seventeen point nine million in his fifth-year option, who is not willing to be patient and is reportedly planning not to show up for training camp. That was the thing that really sparked my brain to look at this and say, okay, C.D.'s not going to show up reportedly. Michael Parsons shouldn't show up at all. And I know he said he's willing to be patient. I don't care what he said. He plays a position that's conducive to injury. If you suffer an injury that falls between career ending and something he could recover from to the point where he's never the same, that prevents him from ever getting the kind of money he already deserves. The problem is they can't get to him because first they got to get Dak solved. Then they got to get CD solved. Then... They moved to Micah. They need to get all three of these done. These should have been done months ago, and it's all potentially coming to a head. If CD holds out, and if Micah does what Ezekiel Elliott did five years ago, because remember, Zeke showed up for the offseason program in 2019 and then didn't show up for training camp, and it was a surprise. Even though Micah is saying he is willing to wait, maybe between now and July 24, he says, screw that, I want my contract, I'm not showing up. If, if two of those three don't show up for camp... That's a problem for the Cowboys. But why not all three do that though? Like, why strength the numbers? All three just say, "Hey, look, you you're gonna you're gonna get us all signed, or we're all skipping camp." Well, because Dak doesn't have any reason to skip camp. He's holding all the cards. He's got all the leverage, and all he's got to do is go out and play well this season. And he hits the open market. They can't restrict yeah, him. They that, can't that, restrain him. That I agree him. with. He becomes a free agent, and I think at some level they're pondering the possibility of letting him find out what else is out there for 2025 so he'll know that he should take the Cowboys offer after the season ends if that's where it goes and I think based upon the fact that we don't have a deal yet and we didn't have a deal at a time when that cap all right that's enough of that but um the problem would be and maybe maybe the problem was already started with um Zach Martin holding out you know basically putting a gun to their head I'm not sure that the Cowboys, with Micah Parsons going into his fourth year, would go ahead and take that bullet to the head. The reality is, is this. Here, here's the thing. Here is the thing. If you end up holding out during the season and you don't see anybody doing that anymore, you don't get credit for that season. You don't get credit for that season. Um, maybe you force the team's hand to try and trade you, but then the problem becomes is people start looking at you and saying, is this guy going to be a problem that, you know, he's going to want to get paid and doing all this, that, and the other, and makes it more difficult for you going forward. And when you miss a game, you miss a game check. And it's non-refundable, it's non-negotiable, and it's, it's just bad. And that has basically become, become the Zeke Elliott rule, that they ended up doing that with the last CBA when Zeke Elliott held out prolonged. That's why you don't see long holdouts at all. But I don't see Micah Parsons holding out. There's, it, it's, not gonna, it's just not going to do it for you. But then again, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job, but I do know that Dak Prescott's dead money hit for next year is if he plays on this year, is $40 million, not 55 And this is where sometimes I think they throw in numbers, you know, that sound maybe worse. Because I've heard people saying, Dak Prescott is $60 million this year. Well, it's not $60 million because $4 million of it got restructured. It's $40 million dead money. And the reality is, is they added two more voidable years, which nothing is put in there. Because they could spread that money out over that four years and take it whenever they want to. So a lot of misinformation out here by the talking heads that are sleeping late and not having the alarm clock waking them up. As always, I appreciate you guys. We got an hour and a half before we have the Dan Salio show. And uh, we'll be seeing you guys then. Peace out.